Welcome to Off the Press, as the newspaper review program, which happens here every day. As you know, on Plus TV Africa, we try to make sense of the national dailies. And with me to do so this morning are two experts, uh, Dr. Femi Dewa Dekoke, who is a, a social commentator, and uh, Ifi, who is a policy analyst. Ifi Oji, good to see you both. Thank good you, morning. Good, good morning. morning, and welcome to Off the Press this morning. Uh, we have a couple of papers for review, but up for review this morning is the Nation newspaper. And it says CBN to banks use 65 percent of deposit as loan, and the March 31st is the deadline. That story is on page 11 of the Nation newspaper. It's already displayed there on your screen. Now, 176 die as Ukrainian uh, plane crashes in Iran. That's a very sad story. And to that, Tehran holds uh, back the black box. They say they are not releasing it. That's the reason page 45 of the Nation newspaper. Uh, World Bank predicts 2.1% growth for Nigeria's economy. That's on the front page. The boys continues on page 8. Uh, Oshun government warns against using bleach to process gari paracetamol to boil meat. What sort of story is this? Well, it is on page 44. And we have a picture story there indicating that OPC and others give support as Operation Amotekun goes into action. That's on page 8. Colorful vans there. Lawmakers to get INEX electoral reforms proposal. Also on the front page continued on page 8. And Supreme Court opposed Ikbazu, Ishakus, and Okawa. Okawas and Bellos elections also on page 43. Let's begin with you, Dr. Femi, to my right. Which story is interesting to you this morning? Well, uh, the, the... All of it. No, not all of it. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. about two of them okay. are of interest. Mm -hmm. um, the first one is the Operation Amoteko, mm -hmm. the supposedly uh, southwestern Nigeria uh, security outfit. Yeah. And it's so funny, I'm a Yoruba person. Okay. It's so funny that Yorubas are not straightforward. Why, why, did, why did you no, say something? It's, it's, it's a problem within. Okay. It's all over the country, but on this case now, they came together last year at a submit, and they all agreed that they want to go this route. But they've been back and front that there are some governors in the Southwest who don't want to be perceived to be falling foul mm -hmm. at the center. So they've been, they've been having, uh, what's it called? Shaky minds on this project. So, so there's been like, yeah, them. there's been like, oh, one leg in, one mm -hmm. leg out, then sure. So up until today, because to, uh, the launching is supposed to be today in Ibadan, mm -hmm. as of yesterday, it's been said that they're not even sure whether the, all the governors will be represented. Will be represented. Uh, only three, as of yesterday, has signified their interest. So it brings us back to what we're saying. The problem is not just at the center. Mm. The problem is within. Even if governors, some quarters believe that these governors are like that because they don't want to be perceived as being against the federal government, mm -hmm. and they, some of them are still seeking juicy positions mm. at the federal level but, when, when they leave office. But, but this begs the question, is it not a case of white elephants? Had they done their homework to be sure that all of them are happy to do this or, you know, and then either way, whether they are in or not, the operation will still take, will still continue, well, wouldn't it? we heard that it's going ahead, that our 120 of these vehicles are already in Ibadan, mm -hmm. which is supposed to be the headquarters of this operation at Montego. They're going to go ahead, but there is an underlying mm -hmm. factor of on willingness, on truthfulness of some of the governors. Mm. Because some of them are accusing one particular governor of being the brain behind this. Okay, we'll see how that unfolds for them. Yeah. All right, Ify, which is, uh, which story do you want to take uh, a look let's at? Let's look at the continuing CBN. saga of, okay. yes, exactly, the city. Yeah, I know you <laughs> Money. I can't okay. help it, money talks. <laughs> All right, and they said 2020 is the money year. So I don't know whether Femi agrees, but yeah, th that's the line I've been hearing, is the money here. So yeah. For me, 2020 is going to be both time. Yeah. So, so, what, what <laughs> okay, let's so, go to so, it. So just, I mean, we all, we all remember last year, around, I think it was around July or early, or somewhere mid to late last year, where CBN laid down the uh, rule or the regulation mm -hmm. regarding loan, de loan to deposit ratio. They left yeah. it at 60%, and now we're hearing that it's even gone up to 65%. 65%. And uh, we also know 
on the other hand as well, where that we have a serious challenge with unemployment. And we, and we know based on uh, what the... Um, what the academics have been saying is that one of our, our pathways, uh, a gateway to, to solving this problem is to em enriching and empowering the uh, small to medium enterprises. Mm -hmm. And so through this uh, LDR uh, regulation from the CBN, the, what, what the federal government is trying to ensure is that a lot of the 1.5 trillion Naira is spread across the board um, with, um, amongst SMEs to ensure that they are empowered to A, hire more people, to have increased capital, and hopefully with that boost their economic growth. Mm -hmm. So one of the other challenges that I think uh, the banks are having right now is that, yes, they want to be able to give out this money, but they still need to make sure that the risks, the risk for giving out the money is still under control, which is what CBN is, is also clamoring to do. They want to have a monitoring, uh, they want to monitor and make sure that the uh, risk Lending risk is also, uh, so you can see that there's obviously some kind of dilemma mm. amongst the banks to ensure that there is a balance and, and a happy medium between the two. Okay. Uh, mm. Just because um, Dr. Femi says for him, he sees 2020 as 50 50, yeah. ish, uh, ish ish, as they say. Now, what bank predicts 2.1% growth for Nigeria's economy? Is this something uh, exciting? Is it? What are your thoughts? Well, 2.1% is meg, but. It's good that we're having growth. So are you now happy? <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I've, I've never been unhappy about <laughs> about uh, predictions on the challenge or what makes me unhappy is the way Nigerians, as in the we, we are the problem of Nigeria. Are you saying the three of us? Are you? We are uh, part of the problem of Nigeria. Uh, if we, we, we are, <laughs> well, please, I'll tell you. Answer, okay, yeah. we know the, you. The you young mean. professional elites are the problem of Nigeria. I was having a discussion yesterday, and after having that discussion, he, he confirmed what has been inside of me. A lot of young elite, people like us, don't even want to be anywhere. We don't want to be with the poor, we don't want to be with the rich. We just want to be in our comfort zone. It's a space. Yes, but even at that space, we become beggars. Mm -hmm. We beg at the top and we give to people at the bottom. I mean, I don't, I, I'm not really sure where Dr. Femi is going with this line, <laughs> okay. uh, line of reasoning. But, but what, I, what I will say, yeah, no, no. This, let's leave it with the fact. Let's stick to the facts right now. Yeah. We know that at the end of the day, right, World Bank has, a, has their different uh, benchmarks for making these predictions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of the um, things I think they're looking at, uh, uh, I think we may even end up discussing it a little later, is the rollout of the federal government of the PPP uh, projects. Yeah. So under these projects, they, they want to take care of and tackle head on infrastructure issues and deficits that we've been facing. And and once that is tackled, I know that the growth would even uh, supersede what has what has been predicted. Mm. So long as we're able to launch it in the way that it's supposed to be launched. And follow the processes. Yeah, exactly. Uh, prescribed. Okay, so that will be it for the Nation newspaper. Uh, we will move on to another paper. Uh, could you please help me with the punch newspaper there? So up next will be uh, the punch newspaper. It says 19.26 billion naira. Uh, billion liters of petrol imported in 2019. That's according to PPPRA on page 28. Already displayed there, you can see it on your screen. And federal government interference, gov, uh, governors intrigues threaten Operation Amotekum on page two. 120 operational vehicles head for Ibadan as inauguration holds today. Don says operation not alternative uh, army as FAMI and IG meet on the same matter. And then we have a picture story. Before we get to the picture story, up there, uh, government orders closure of unlicensed uh, cooking gas plants. That story is on page 10. Uh, federal government develops 139 PP projects and six investors on page 25. And Buhari Minister NNPC boss meet over uh, Middle East tension. And that's on page 28. UK issues travel, uh, travel rather advisory warns citizens to avoid protests on page 12, and oil firms making profits host communities suffering. Wow, according to the presidency, that story is on page 32 also. Now we have the picture story of the 176 that died as a uh, Ukrainian airliner crashes in Iran, and we know that uh, Tehran also 
has refused to provide the black box. Uh, that story is on page 40. Casina gunmen abduct four customs officers and kill teenagers on page 9. Uh, I was never under pressure to contest 2023 presidency. That's according to former President Jonathan. On page 18, Supreme Court upholds Niger, Abe, and Delta governor's elections on page 13. And $24,000 extortion EFCC comes Sheikh Hussani's uh, houses and office on page 2. And eight arrested for killing policeman, church goer, woman in Lagos on pages four and five of the Punch newspaper. And finally, Ogun local government chair nominee dies as to screening of your do months. And that's on page 19. Wow, what would have happened? That's sad. Okay, so if you should I be, let, let me begin from. I just want to continue from where I stopped regarding the 139 uh, okay. private and public. Uh, project, a uh, partnership project. Mm. So now we've, we've heard about this rollout where the federal government has done this through the um, through the agency, through mm -hmm. the yeah. So so what? what but what, in closer analysis, and you look at the different uh, projects that are being rolled out, you find that all the welfare projects or welfare sectors, yeah. if you look at it cross sector, from welfare to education to agriculture. Those sort of issues that are supposed to be issues that, are, that fall within largely the domain of the federal government or the government at large are not really projects that they have really focused on. Mm. They focus on other projects that actually should be more within the private sector domain. So my question is, we all know that, we all, we've, we've, I mean, we've done the analysis of the budget across um, 2020, the appropriations bill, over and over again. We yeah. know where the, uh, the deficits are, especially regarding spending across uh, welfare and uh, and and the other and health and the health sector education and yeah so we understand that what the challenges are and we know that there is a big big there's big pressure to also put the infrastructure uh, projects in place but I would what I would what I would suggest or what I would hope in that you know is that um, these projects that are cut across these different sectors focus more on the welfare. Uh, PPPs. Mm -hmm. Those are really crucial because if we are not up to where we should be in terms of our health and well-being, how are we going to be able to ensure that the rest of those projects on the oh, human yeah. capital are carried on? Mm. So that is what I would suggest. Whether or not these projects go on as they, sh as they should is another guess and it's what we are hoping. Mm, that's quite detrimental. Mm. Alright, thank you for that perspective there. Uh, Dr. Femi, which other story do you want us to take a look at? Well, on Bwari Minister and NPC boss mate yesterday, mm. Well, it is, it's, it is expected because Mr. President is actually our substantial minister for petroleum. Mm -hmm. And then because of what has happened in the uh, Middle East, the attack on uh, General Soleimani. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think within 24 hours, the oil price went up mm -hmm. about yeah. 2.4%. Percent. percent increase, that's yeah. true. And it went from 67 to 70. 70 point something dollar that's right. per barrel. And I'm sure... Because uh, the press, as uh, in the story, was said that the minister and the GMD of uh, NNPC did not uh, give anything out. Like they, yeah, it in, was a closed door. Yeah, they didn't talk to the press, mm -hmm. the correspondents when they came out. But we're just uh, guessing, thinking what, around it. Yeah, what would have gone in there? It would have been thinking that I would have been thinking that what the Mr. President would be saying to them that look, because as they are major source of uh, finance for our budget for 2020. So how do we, you will be asking a very pertinent question. Mm. How do we maximize this, it, it might be a short term increase. How do we maximize our production of crude oil and so that we can make at least something to fund our uh, budget? Sadly, That's what I'm I mean, I, I understand what you're saying, Doctor, yeah. but uh, sadly for us, uh, our production levels are down. Yeah. So unfortunately, even, 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 so I think even from a, from a, from a pricing perspective, yeah. That is going to be an adjuster, an adjuster to us having lower production levels. Yeah. So, in terms of having that as a source of uh, funding our budget, I don't think that's going to be feasible for 2020. Mm. Yeah. Hopefully, by 2021, that will pick up. No, if you're already in 2021, uh. let's. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. Okay, let's be in 2020, but we get your point also. All right. Um, any other thing somebody wants to talk about here, or? we we'll move on in the interest of, of time and go to the Vanguard newspaper. Again, I think it's Operation Amoteco is all over the newspapers here. So the Vanguard newspaper has already displayed. It says, Army and police frown 
as Southwest launches Operation Amoteco. Uh, okay, that's a new, a new perspective to the story. We'll go ahead with lunch, according to Don. We are not opposed to it. Police says uh, those opposed to Amoteco are enemies of Yoruba, according to Ari Adams. That story is on page five. Uh, we also see the U.S. and Iran face off. Airlines cancel flights to Middle East, avoid Gulf airspace as Iran threatens to bomb Dubai and Israel. That's yeah. frightening at this point. Uh, Supreme Court upholds the elections, as we've said, of Ishaku, uh, Iqbazo, and the others. Stock markets post biggest daily gain in one year, rises uh, 471 billion naira. That story is on page 19. And then we have a picture story here also. Lagos State Commissioner of Police, Hakim, displaying guns recovered from criminals when the command paraded criminals at Ikeja. You wonder who, who is giving them all of this uh, ammunition. Now, Equimis Betray has created problem for Ndibo, according to Uwabunga on page 15 of the Vanguard newspaper. Alleged money laundry court adjourns Mumfa's trial to January the 15th. That story is on page 10. And EFCC has no power to investigate Rivers government, according to Commissioner on page 41. And finally, Oshomole absent as Obaseki monarch preach peace leadership at Auchide. What are your thoughts? Well, I'm going to go back to this Operation of Moteco. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Let's, let's, let's well, when let's he says understand. army police frowns. <laughs> yes. And you see, that is, it, it comes back to what I always say. That's a problem in Nigeria. We're quickly to either place something under religion or ethnic bias. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Rather than to see this uh, project or process to combat or to support the police and the army mm. on our insecurity problem. Now it's being tagged the Southwest, the Yoruba, gender mm. And that is our problem. The, the, until we stop, we need to see the objectivity of what, is, what they're trying to do here. It is not about uh, where Yoruba is. The whole country is insecure. It's national interest. Yes. It should be national interest. Now, if this is happening here, and they're able to fish out or to combat insecurity to a, uh, to, uh, a level, mm -hmm. it will be a support for the army and the police. Over the years, we've seen that the police don't even have enough manpower. Mm -hmm. They don't have enough equipment. They've shown that over the over the years. Mm. So now they're getting support. You're now saying they're taking your job. I would even I tend understand. to think that at some point there will be some kind of oh, uh, um, uh, collaboration yes. between, the, that, you know, between that's all what of the we should, That's what we should be looking at. Mm. Okay. All right. If you see you not did enough information, anything on our tech one, we'll just proceed. Oh, I mean, I mean, I'm just going to, I think we should always um, celebrate successes and wins. And mm -hmm. one of the big wins we had was the stock market uh, yeah. posting b in bigger numbers. Mm -hmm. I mean, 471 billion. Uh, yeah, yes. according to the volume of trade is, is astounding. I mean, they've been going through really, really a really tough time the last couple of years, and they've been trying to find their feet. And I know that across the different sectors, especially with the banking sector and also in uh, FMCG, that's the fast moving moving consumer goods, okay. have, have both, uh, uh, they've both um, shown uh, big wins. So I think on average you have a probably about um, 2, two, two, two six percent mm -hmm. across the banking sector with Zenith Bank, UBA, posting those gains and also uh, you're looking at uh, the FMCGs as well with, with big gains as well so I think it's something that we should always look to and look and maybe that's even part, part, form part of the consolidation of what uh, the World Bank is talking about at mm -hmm. the moment. So apparently this is the money uh, uh, it looks like there will be something good for us in this year. <laughs> yeah. Femi I just need you to say yeah, <laughs> just, be, just, just be positive. Femi yeah, we have a half empty person and, and he's, just be he's positive very... that this year 2020 is going to be different because both economically you're not saying the problem. Okay, we'll yeah, it's not going to happen at Bracadabra. We agree but, it's not going to happen. But we are yeah. moving. I mean, there's a shift. We're yes. saying, acknowledge this, the little yeah. shift even. It's still talk. We need to walk the talk. Okay, yeah. so uh, we'll take uh, this Oshomale absent as Obaseki and Monarch preach peace. Is there a political... Is this... Uh, that Oshomale and again? Obaseki. I don't know when their they trouble will end. Anyway. We hope that their trouble will end. Yeah, yeah, In the interest yeah. of time, we'll just quickly go to uh, this day newspaper, which will be the last uh, newspaper. CBN retains 65% LDR sustains penalty for the 14 banks, which we already talked about. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ify, for sharing, uh, you know, giving us insight on that. Airport's mass passenger traffic hits 8.5. Uh, 
Four eight million in six months. That's on page six. What does that mean? So people are moving. Uh, there's no. Well, I think it's just it's just basically trying to reflect what happened over the Christmas holidays. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. Okay. People I just want to know if everybody's headed towards that Canada. You know, they, <laughs> the, the journey is towards Canada. <laughs> I'm just wondering if that's it. Okay. Now, Supreme Court upholds <laughs> the same story which we had. Mieti yeah. Allah moves to stop farmers and headers clashes and bans night grazing. That story is on the front page. If you scroll down a little on your screen, you'll be able to see it. Uh, there it is. Thank you very much. And then Labour reviews progress on minimum wage negotiations on page five. And I think that's the only story we'll, be, we'll take. Uh, Dr. Femi or Ife, does anyone want to say something on that? On Labour. Yes. They are negotiating. You know, some, some governors, we know that some governors I told you, well, I thought there was a deadline that was given. It was and December. It was a yes, yes, there was and deadline. And we're in January 2020. New Year. Yeah, and we're still talking about negotiations. We hope that New Year there's going to be new behavior. Well... Hopefully, I hope they will get this sorted on time, mm. and then we can make progress. Mm, let's move let's away hope, from Let's there. hope our, our, our leaders follow, have, follow their New Year resolution. Do they have one? <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> All right. Let me say thank you very much, Dr. Femi thank and you. Ife, also, for coming and sharing your thoughts this morning on the program. And this is where we're going to call it a wrap. We'll do the same every weekdays except weekends, 8.30, here on Plus TV Africa. The program is off the press. And I am Amaka Oko saying have a great day ahead of you.